you want to get better FC24, come join the Neil Guides FC School Patreon series. If you don't get better after one month, we'll refund your money. That's the Neil Guides guarantee. Link is down below in the description. Check it out. Okay, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to the weekly tactic update. We've got ultra defensive formation, a defensive ratty formation, which is very, very important for the team of the season. The 4 3 2 1 meta, and we're bringing back the 4 2 4, as I mentioned, very, very important for comebacks in the team of the season. Now, the first thing I want to start with is a 5 2 2 1. We're keeping this in. I may change this to the 4 2 3 1. This week is also kind of important. I know there's some players like Doku um, that are very expensive and Max, but it's actually a pretty good, affordable card you can get as well. So, this formation, I put this in as kind of like the defensive formation that I'm using to close the game out. You gotta really start being ratty at this stage of the year. This is not the time that you need to be messing around trying four three threes and hoping things are gonna work out. You really need to use your best meta formations. Um, I got balance 39, 45 depth. Don't forget above 45 depth is when your team start pressing. Long ball, direct passing, and 70 width to be wide as possible. Hey, when we're defending out the win, we have players that are wide so we can pass to them so we're not closed in and secluded. Especially when your opponent's pressing, you need to have a defensive system against that, especially a formation with wingers. These are lambs and rams, so they're technically wingers, like in a 4 2 3 1, those wide players. So you've got three players in the box, a corner and three kicks, however you like. You can even put these down to one if you want, if you want that defensive suit. But the main thing here is that this formation has five back and two CDMs. You should not be able to concede. It kind of depends on how everyone plays. By next week, we'll know to place a 4 2 3 1 here or not. I'm not too sure yet, but I think it's better to be over defensive this year, this this week. And then next week, you can say like, okay, you know what? Maybe I don't have to be that defensive. But at least I know I got a backup. So this is the ultra defensive setup. We've got cut, cut passing lane, step out attacking, and cover center for both CDMs. Of course, Lam and Aram, come back in the fence, get into the box for a cross. So they're going to come back when you're defending, but they're going to still be in attack. Stay central, stay forward, and balanced for the striker. Left him on balance. That way, if you don't have, let's say you have the ball over here in midfield, there's no one to pass the ball to. Your centre mid, um, your striker will trying to help that centre mid in those roles if you are strong. It's not going to come back all the way to centre mid. It's not going to be like a false line. or going to come all the way to midfield. But it will come a bit towards the, the ball. This is important if you're under pressure. Normally when you're under pressure, it'll be wide as possible. And if your opponents are pressing you, you need sometimes that outlet play to make. Um, and then we've got both the left back and right back on. Stay back, overlap. And as I mentioned to you for many weeks, stay back and overlap you can literally just put this um, on d-pad tactics attack in four backs and then you make this formation an attack in formation so this is really one to close the game i wouldn't start with this formation unless you got the four backs enjoying the attack this is one to close the game with you got two cdms and a back five i'm gonna tell you something no bs if you can't defend with this formation it's not the game's fault it's your fault you're gonna have to admit that one day i'm not gonna be some fairy tale creator that's gonna tell you some fantasy land that how this formation is gonna make you a 20-0 player if you're not a 20-0 player make sure you sort your gameplay out first it's very important it's, i'd rather be direct with you guys because at the end of the day i'd rather you hate me and you get more wins that's my job it's not my job for you for me to entertain you or for, for you to like me and then jay and then days for me to teach you how to get the best amount of wins now can I go to the next one? I'm trying to get this done as soon as I can. Um, this is one, this is a ratty tactic. It's a 5 2 on 2 now, This is a very attacking formation. Don't be deceived. Don't think 5 2 on 2 It must be defensive. I told you this was um, a 2 1, a 2 1 4. You wouldn't think that, would you? Um, so the thing is with this formation is that realistically, you're playing with a back three. The left back and the right back are going to be very attacking. These are going to be the unmarked wingers. I promise you, I promise you. Go into any game and use this formation. I promise you, my hands are up. I tell you, there's no secret. Nothing can defend against this formation. If these players are wide as possible, they will always be unmarked. Ever since I used this in FIFA 19, it's the same way. In team in the season, it's going to be very, very important when you can't get through those gaps to get down the wing. We've got balance, 35 width, because although we're playing... 5-2-1-2, two, two. when you're defending, you're really just playing with a back three. Um, it's only when you kind of go back into that defensive stance where like your opponent's got the ball for like five seconds, you default back into your five back. You don't want to be too wide, so you're going with 35 there. Trust me, this will make sense, especially with wingers, because you ideally want your back five. You don't want the wings to be going in between your back lines. You want them to be going around, keeping your back line in shape. Think about it in real life football. When have you ever seen someone keep a gap in between the left center back and the, and the wingers, um, the left back and right backs. You don't want a winger to penetrate a space in between. 65 depth. You can be a bit aggressive. You can actually start the game with this formation. I use 65. I think it's a good balance because they sit pretty deep in this formation. I've got fast build up places. So when you get the ball back, these players are going to run forward. The left 
back and a right back turn into wingers. This is the main thing with this formation. You have to really have fast players. I'm going to show you how I set up and what players I use there in a second. 55, seven players in the box and one corners and free kicks. Of course, you want players inside the box. I think you should be fine here because when you get counter-attacked realistically, you're going to be defending the central area, just the wide areas that you might be exposed with. The only thing I would say here with direct passing, um, I do like forward runs, but if you like direct passing on a 4-3-2-1, you may like direct passing here. Personally... I like forward runs, if you're asking me personally speaking. Then going over to the instructions. So we got get in, get in behind and come back in the fence for one player. Another one on get in behind and stay forward. Now, is this going to make this player somehow come and become a left in the mid? No, it doesn't work like that. What this is going to make you do is that let's say you have an opponent's back four. You see your two strikers now pinned against your opponent's back four. If a player's on come back in the fence, that will be your opponent's back four. And maybe Correa will be up against one of the strikers and one will be just behind when you win the ball back. So that gives you that space to that one, two for that player to make a run in behind. Very, very important. You will see what I mean. The more When you use formation for quite a long time, you will see what I'm saying. It's just going to make this player come back just a little bit when you're defending. That's it. Just behind the striker. Just think of it like a, a five... Two, one, 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 one. Think about it that way. Um, but just ever so slightly. It's very, very important for possession and trying to build up the attack. You know, you'll know what I'm talking about when you play the game. Stay forward. Um, you can use get into the box and if you want. I've got high um players in the box here, so it doesn't really matter per se. But that's just gonna force the player to get into the box for a cross. The idea is when you get the ball back, you can pass the ball, ping it straight to the cam. If you do struggle defensively, you can put come back in the fence. Similar to what I said with the striker. So just make the player kind of sit a bit deeper. So when you are defending, if you do win the ball back in a turn of play, Alvarez or the CDM will be closer to the cam. In this case, um, Stanley will be closer to Alvarez to make that pass. And then same here, one of your strikers will be a bit closer. And then you can always use that player to make a run in behind. So we got. Uh, you can use either come back and defense, stay forward. It will depend on your skill level. I'd recommend here at least stay forward first and see where you go from there. Both CDMs, both of them on stay where attack and cover center. I know the seniors there. We'll talk about positioning in a second. Stay back, cover center. Then all the back three is fine. Goalkeeper on sweeper keeper. That is it. This is on default for saving the crosses. The left back and right back now. If you know how to use D-pad tactics. Put these both on stay back and overlap. If you have no idea what D-pad tactics are and you're like, what are you talking about, Neil? Don't worry, just ignore that. Just put them on during the attack and overlap. Now, what's important here, these players are going to be quick. I've actually put Cecenia here or Rodrigo I actually like a lot. Um, what I've done something like this, so Alvarez, my main striker, he's the one that's got the five-star weak foot. He's very good, top tier meta stats. What an evolution he was, honestly. And we've got Correa in the middle. Now, normally I would go to Cecenia. Bet's the senior, um, he's got to take a play style, um, but Correa's got the finish shot play style. In fact, maybe even something like this, like this, and then what I could do is I can move here Rodrigo. Now, Rodrigo will be playing as that winger, so you can actually put quick players. As long as you've got quick players, you can put Zambrotta there. I put Olga there. So these are the players that are going to be going up and down. High pace, high stamina. Let's be realistic. Let's not paint a fan fantasy land picture now here. It's very important. This guy should be minimum minimum 90 sprint speed without a chemistry style minimum okay guys i don't know why people keep telling me and tell me oh can i use this left back can i use this right back with 79 pace at this stage of the year absolutely not you cannot especially during team season this needs to be minimum 90 sprint speed as i've always said to you even the center backs minimum 83 sprint speed unless you're a pro player and you want to use a1 sprint speed with someone that's like an absolute tank that's different but most of the time, mistakes can be recovered by pace. If you haven't got the pace, you're not going to be able to recover. So if you don't make mistakes, then you can use a center back with like 83 pace, 82 pace. In my opinion, even my level, I'm using 90 pace center backs, sprint speed minimum. Because if I make a mistake, I know that I can recover, especially with the back five. Very, very important. That's the only two players that are very, very important. The two center mids, you can use box to box. That's completely fine. I don't want to make this too much for a too long video. So we're going to straight to the 4 3 2 one. Um, but I just to make sure I explain all this in detail because I know everyone always says they go either go too fast or too slow. But again, you can always speed up the video if I am going too fast. Um, we're keeping the 4 3 2 1 here. This is the, the meta 4 3 2 1 that's been there since day one. It's still the best formation inside the game. Getting rid of it now would be just it's ridiculous, to be honest. Use the formation I'm most comfortable with, but this one, I think everyone has been using it. Long ball, direct passing, 45. It's the same one. This is like the, the text, the PH Zins. 
and Mark Marley's and my combination. So I use all those tactics together and I use a bit of twist on mine and I come with this. I think this is literally probably one of the best tactics. Um, I would say get rid of long ball uh, for those that are not good um, with, if, if you rush, if you, got, if you get the ball and you know you lose the ball a lot and you rush your play, get rid of long ball because long ball, you have to be able to know when to be patient and when to go forward. This is some things that I teach in the FIFA school series, FC school series. Is very important to notice. This is the difference between what makes this formation a 20 and 0 player or a 10 and 0 player. You've got to know when to move, when to pass, when to rotate. The most important thing. It's not about tactics. Tactics can help you like 15, 20 percent. But at the end of the day, it's going to be your gameplay. Um, this is it. Um, you've got stay central, get in behind for both the left striker and the center striker. Right, uh, right striker, or right forward, should I say? Stay central, get it behind a comeback and a fence. Um, left center mid is on cover wing, get forward. And the, both the center mids are both on step out attacking and cover center. So when you are defending, you're defending in a 4 4 2. Adria goes here, the senior goes here, Alvarez will go in the middle, and Correa will go there. And that would defend in a 4 4 2. When you attack, you're going to transfer to a 4 3 2 1. Still one of the best pressing tactics and one of the best attacking tactics inside this formation. And uh, left back, stay back while attacking, overlap. And then the right back, we got them on overlap. And the goalkeeper, you can put sweeper keeper. So the right back here, we have that play on overlap. This is going to be the person that's going to create that overload on this side. And then you can attack more on the right hand side, a bit more attack heavy. Feel free to also flip stuff. People always ask me, no, can I flip sides? Can I make my left back go forward? Yes, you can. But then, of course, if you flip it, then that means that um, Alvarez has to then go. That means then Alvarez, not Alvarez, should I say, Cecilia has to go here and then Stanway go here. And of course, you put this play on get forward and. Uh, um, cover wing and then you'll put this play on comeback and offense so you can flip it as well um this will be the formation that you'll use to be attacking maybe even start the game with if you feel your opponent is built on the weaker end so this is the way you'll do it so when the game really starts you'll probably go down these four two formations i would say you have two attacking slots here i'd probably say the four three two one is what most people watching this video probably start the game with and then if you are struggling this would be your 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 saving grace this formation if you are coming to that point where like you know what I'm actually secure in this game. Don't switch immediately to the 5-2-2-1. This is one I would say to only really use if you're really struggling. If you need two CDMs and a back five, then use formation. This is the only formation inside the game where you have two CDMs and a back five. Because the CDMs are the, uh, the cut passing lane instructions. Very, very important. So this is like arguably the, the most defensive formation inside the game. You've got one attacking alternative formation. And then you've got, in fact, maybe the 5 2 should be on this side. But just because of... 4 3 2 1 has always been here, we just left it here. And then you have the comeback tactic. Now, again, I went through this yesterday. This is the tactic to use if you're losing. This is going to save you so many games. I promise you. You know, you can come back to this video and you and then when you watch this next week, you will see this will save you. This is the automatic AI press. The game does everything for you 90% of everything. The final 10%, all you got to do is select the right player at the right time and select the player and win the ball back. That's it. If When your opponent has the ball here, these players are going to press. It's just up to you to make that final tackle. That's the biggest thing here. So if you give this to any top tier pro player, they'll, they'll choke anyone. They'll get them into a position where they can't get the ball out. The same would be for you. But the AI will help you do most of it. That's why you ever go into those games and you find the AI is just doing ridiculous, crazy stuff for your opponent. They're getting on, so you've got no space. You're closed in. You can't make a pass. There's someone else behind them. Defender also following up. This is what people are using. Um, you can use long ball here is what I'd recommend. Um, as I mentioned this yesterday, um, you can use balanced if you find yourself to be a bit too aggressive. Because again, remember, psychologically speaking, it's very important. When you go into a game and let's say you're losing, let's say 2-0, a lot of people, they psychologically think, oh, no, you know what? I need to get back into this game. It's 60 minutes, and they end up rushing opportunities. If you use long ball, psychologically speaking, the game's going to be quicker. The players will be making runs going forward. You're going to have no one to pass to, and you're going to feel to rush. You're going to feel to run with the ball when you should be just dribbling with left stick. So these are all things to bear in mind. I would honestly recommend here, personally speaking, is that you just use balance. If you are comfortable, use long ball, 55 and 7 play inside the box. And left mid, right mid, both of them will get it behind, come back in the fence, get into the box or cross. Both stri strikers on, stay forward, get in behind. And the key thing was come back in the fence. That's one thing I've forgotten yesterday's video, come back in the fence, should I say. Um, this is very, very important because when you are, when you are pressing, it's actually a mistake that I made yesterday. Um, when you are pressing, 
you want everyone to be behind the ball. Yes, technically the two strike. It, no, it's not really a mistake per se because when you go into a four four two, you put everyone on comeback and offense. You're going to defend like this, and the two strikers stay forward anyway. Comeback and offense just helps them stay just a bit more closer to the midfield. Um, but if you want to be a bit more aggressive, you can put them both on stay forward. But remember, it's going to, you're going to rely on you to right stick switch to these players and then bring them back manually yourself. That's the key thing. So a bit of a high level thing. But you'll see some of the top tier players like Tex when they use their 4 4 2 all out attacking, or even the Dosaris or any of those top tier players, historically speaking, have always put or like to put sometimes stay forward on one of the strikers, or at least both. I think Tex is a lot heavily in FIFA 19, 20, and 21 as well. Um, center mids both on get forward, cover center, and left back, right back on stay back, overlap, and no sweeper keeper. Um, and that is the tactics. I probably have like a top tips. Uh, for FC um, to get the most wins tomorrow um, because I think most of you probably watching this probably starting your games or probably going to get your games done. Um, I'm actually going to play Weekend League a bit late because it's my birthday um, and of course why would I want to play Weekend League on my birthday? That's the big thing. Do I want to go into a uh, bad gameplay situation on my birthday? Absolutely not. So I'll play maybe when I go out, come back the next day and have a cup of tea and play the game and we'll see from there um but anyway guys hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching don't forget if you want to get better at 24 you come to my patreon so it's patreon.com for such no guys if you don't get better after one month we will refund you my that is how we've excelled thousands of people now maybe even tens of thousands of people to the elite division come join if you don't get better after one month we will refund your mind is any other service off of that no they don't because how sure we are you will improve as long as you follow exactly what i say and you follow the system you're gonna improve anyway guys thanks for watching take it easy and i'll catch you next time peace out